take me with you I'm ready to go Let the winds of change Shape and grow Hello and welcome. I am so glad you're here. I'm Beth, a creator-based coach with CMH Coaching for Life. I'm here today to help you and those you love create a life you feel grounded and at home in. Think of a life where you feel peace, love for those around you, and in a flow with just enough challenge to keep you happy and creating something wonderful. Sounds like magic, but it's not. You can create that life every single day. You can have a life full of love, excitement, hope, and creation. Our mission at CMH Coaching is to flood the earth with light through compassion, mindfulness, and hope. And I'm going to ask a favor of you. If you like what you see and hear today, think of someone you know that would enjoy and benefit from this message. Our mission is to flood the world with compassion, mindfulness, and hope. Share this with them. But for now, this is time just for you. So settle into whatever you're doing and enjoy this time with the girls where we create that one awesome, amazing, perfect life every one of us is seeking. And I Some of us a little more polished than others, but we are happy to be here. So Jen, thank you for being today. We're excited. I am too. This is a fun little... Um tool that I'm going to teach you. Um, but before we get into the actual technique, we're going to talk a little bit about emotional baggage. Hmm. So when I say emotional baggage, what are some of, what are some of the thoughts and even po possibly images that come to your mind? I immediately see suitcases, big, heavy, old, beaten up leather suitcases. Yeah. Heavy, too much to carry. Not much fun. Fun. Yeah. I see backpack like just this backpack with just rocks and <laughs> like oh I think I need to carry that heavy thing yeah let's that's super fun to carry that around <laughs> that's super energetic that's one of the, most of the rock in the backpack right mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, emotional baggage emotional is it's stuff I don't let go for whatever reason, it's just, I don't know if I like love it or think I deserve it or whatever, whatever, but it just is that emotional stuff that I just keep hanging on to. And sometimes I'll like take that rock and, and throw it and be like, okay, I'm done with it. And then somewhere along my little walk, I pick it up again and shove it back <laughs> in my backpack. I have actually even gone hunting for it. Exactly. I want it, right? right? Right. Right. It's the whole forgiveness process. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so what are some, because so when we talk about emotional baggage, what are some other baggages that are kind of in that same area? So emotions, but what are some other things? Some things that I've thought of are when I have an experience and everything that's involved in that experience, my emotions, other people's emotions, thoughts, feelings, mm. things that are sad, perceptions, things that are derived from it. That can also be part of baggage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. Be it's thought processes. Mm -hmm. Having, having lived long enough to be able to see patterns and seasons in life, mm -hmm. I can, I have begun to see these patterns of thought process. When you do this, I do this. Mm -hmm. And when you do that, do this. And we've got these cycles that are already built and we can nourish them and keep them going or we can let them go. But it's the recognition that we actually have those cycles. And I think of those kind of woven in with the emotional baggage in the middle of it all. Yeah. I think it's part of it. Yes. Like in, in, and I think when we start to see those patterns and those cycles is when we really start to be aware and we can really have some shift and change in our life. Cause it's you know, true. cause some of them can serve us in a very positive way. And some of them are very negative impacting. So mm -hmm. that's, that's also something to think about and look at as we start to do this technique. 
<clears throat> because we have to identify something to work on, okay? <clears throat> so let's talk a little bit about this technique. It's mm -hmm. called a kinetic release technique. So a kinetic release, a kinetic thing is using movement, using your body to facilitate the release, to do the release. <clears throat> now, we do this naturally. We just don't know that we do it. <clears throat> Some of us, if we are dealing with something that we're trying to figure out in our head or we have an intense emotion, <clears throat> some of us will, will just be like, I got to get out and go and walk. And yeah. when you're done with that walk, you have processed in your mind, you've worked some of that energy out of your system. And so you, you're, you feel better or you feel like you can address it better or you see it clearer. So that's, that's part of a kinetic release. Um, <clears throat> if I have something that's really super troubling, I start weeding. So you just better be careful. I'm going to weed something because <laughs> I just have to get that energy out and I have to weed something and I have to be productive. Yeah. Trimming trees and taking the branches off is so cathartic. Mm -hmm. yes. Yeah. So Vac vacuuming. Awesome. Vac oh, yes. Absolutely. Vacuuming. Scrubbing yeah. floors. Yeah. Scrubbing floors, getting all the yeah. dirt out of the gravel. Yep. <laughs> yeah. So these are ways that we use our body to process and to figure out things as as we are living this life. Well, sometimes those natural ways of doing and your body should just naturally do this too. Because there's a lot of emotions, a lot of things that we deal with in our life that we just that don't get kind of stuck in us energetically or um create certain like imbalances in our body or in our thought patterns or in our um, emotional stability. Um, so that's when these techniques come in, these little things that we're learning, the tapping, using oils, all the stuff that we've been teaching um, to help us kind of get this gunk out so that we can have a, a clearer understanding of ourselves and of our experiences and those around us. Mm -hmm. um, and, and be able to, to, I think, move through life successfully. Um, like I said, your body knows how to do this naturally, but sometimes things just get built up or stuck. And so that's what we're going to talk about now. The stuck emotions, the trapped emotions, the trap experiences, the thoughts that keep running through your head as you're trying to figure it out and you just can't. Um, or, you know, because maybe you need to have a different viewpoint on it. And sometimes you have to release some of that tension or that energy those emotions to, you know, have some realizations and have some um, correct understandings or just to have some like peace in your body, if that makes sense. Um, and just calm them. <laughs> this technique is great for anxiety. So if you feel like you're just, you know, you're anxious or you're stressed out, great technique for it. Um, and how this works. So this comes from um, a woman called Ali Druzit. This is, I did not create this, um, but this is an amazing, amazing way to do it. So I want, as we're talking, I want you to think of an issue. And let's go back. When, I need to talk about something too, because this issue can also be a discomfort or a pain or a physical issue in your body, because we know that everything that exhibits itself in our body has an emotional undercurrent or undertone. And a lot of times, if we can just rid ourselves of that, our body can naturally take over and start the healing process. So even if it's something that we've been dealing with chronically for a long time, we can address it this way to kind of bleed off that energy and then see how our body can then resolve the issue. Sometimes it happens, sometimes it doesn't, but at least we've tried. Okay. So what this looks like, so think of an issue. I'm sorry. sorry, go ahead wanted to say you said sometimes it happens sometimes it doesn't but it's all progress it's all progress it's yes like I've had a lot of experience using the the clearing for physical issues and so um sometimes I get an immediate feel better just immediate relief sometimes it takes a week or so to get relief but I get relief in other areas and mm -hmm. at the end of the cycle I recognize all of it mm -hmm. so I think everything we do matters whether yeah. we instant relief or not Oh, yes, because nothing exists in isolation. Everything is connected. There's like a cascade effect through everything. Yeah. And so it's like that proverbial onion that everybody talks about. You're just you're just peeling it back and peeling it back and peeling it back. And sometimes it will take 
a one go and sometimes it'll take maybe 20 goes, who knows, okay? This technique um, is safe for the big issues and even the small little issues. It just, you just have to address it differently in the sense that if it's kind of just like this little one issue and you just wanna kind of like see how this process works and maybe it'll take one or two times doing it, that's fine. If it's a bigger issue, you're gonna to have to commit to doing this every day until you see how it resolves, which can be three days, four days, a week, two weeks, just depends on how big the issue is. But you work on it every day because it's like this. Here's your issue, okay, it's big, and you're just gonna take and work on just a little, you're gonna take a bite size out of that issue when you do this. And then the next day you're gonna come back and do another bite size. And as you do that, that issue is going to shrink and it's gonna resolve. Um, so um, everybody think about, cause we're gonna do this process and you don't have to share your issue. You can, if you want, um, but everybody think about something that they want to have some relief in, some resolution in, something that, you know, kind of possibly some shift and change in. Um, it can be anything from what caused my nightmare last night or, you know, what is causing my lower back pain? Mm -hmm. um, that's mine. That's mine right there. That's the what I'm working on. Mine is. So that's I got gonna a pain be, in the neck. <laughs> that's going to be this. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. That's gonna be, this is what you're going to be working on. So you're going to have to commit to doing it more than just once. Um, yeah, but... If I get my markers, I get my markers out more often. That'll be fun. That'll be fun. Exactly. Um, it can also be like um, the issue is a reoccurring thought or mm -hmm. an intense emotion. Like when this happens to me, why am I always feeling insecure or why do I feel anger? You know, so you can, you can look at it that way. Okay. Um, what are some other things? Oh, if you have depression, that's going to be one of these, you know, or like, like we could even do like a past experience. Like if I wanted to work on all anything and everything connected and contributing to my experience in Utah, which is a big, huge ball, but what that about, would be good. Could we do it as we're working on um, implementing a, or increasing something like a character trait? Like we want oh. to or patient or more kind yes, or more absolutely kind. you can Use do that to help clear out the stuff that's in the way of developing that trait is that how you have to say it helping yourself to remove or clear out like you said the stuff that's in the way of developing that yes that's an because you're still working on an issue but you're giving it kind of like a positive more of a positive bent absolutely absolutely that's a good way good way of doing it um so this release, let's talk about it a little bit. So what you're going to do, any questions so far on what we're doing, what we're trying to pinpoint? No? Okay. So the first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna take a, a blank piece of paper and you can either have it vertical or horizontal, however you want it, okay? Has to be blank. And we're gonna write, on the very top of it, write five minutes of, and then state your issue, okay? Now, you have to let your, your subconscious have some instruction, and that what this, that's what this is. We're giving your subconscious the instruction that for the next five minutes, we're going to be focusing on what is contributing, causing, anything and everything, this issue, okay? So we're asking our subconscious to gather all that information, okay? And what this is gonna do is this is gonna tell your subconscious, your body and any other systems and anything involved in this, th this is our focus. This is where we're gonna be focusing. So write that on the top of, of the paper, five minutes, and I'm gonna write mine too because I'm gonna be doing this. Hey, Jen, so oh. I am do this for my back ache, for the low back discomfort. Mm -hmm. Five minutes of, what do I put at the top? What's, I would just put five minutes of my back ache, my lower back ache. 
Okay. You've already kind of primed your subconscious because you're asking your subconscious anything and everything that's contributing or causing. And you can write that, you can write that down if you want. Anything and everything that is contributing or causing my lower back pain. I mean, you can write that down. But once you kind of like have said that and kind of like your subconscious has that information, it knows when you write down on this piece of paper five minutes of my lower back pain, it knows what's happening. Okay. Okay, so mine just looks like this. Five minutes of my lower back pain. That's all I've written on that. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I'm gonna I'm gonna walk, I'm gonna give you the instruction. I'm gonna walk you through what it would look like totally, and then we're gonna do it because I have some things to explain. Okay. So what you're going to do is you're just gonna start scribbling, however it looks. Okay. So I just started scribbling. I don't know if you can see that. You're just gonna start scribbling and however that looks <gasps> that's so hard to do oh my gosh Christine, <laughs> help your rules girl <gasps> her, her. <laughs> help her just okay. help her know it's okay okay jc we're going to give your rules girl a little bit more information because what you're going to do <laughs> okay what you're going to do is you're going to close your eyes okay and and okay so I'm going to use me as the example. So I'm going to close my eyes and I'm going to imagine looking at my body and I'm, cause what I'm, I'm looking for anything and everything that's contributing or causing my lower back pain. And I'm going to ask my subconscious to show me in my body, the spots they and, and mine always show up as looking like either mud or sludge, these spots in my body. Okay. And yeah. I don't have to really focus on whether I, I just kind of get this overview of like, okay, that's where those, those, that's where it is. And sometimes it's like just a big blob. It's not just a spot. It's like, oh my gosh, there's a big blob of it right here or something, you know? And <laughs> exactly. And so as I close my eyes and start to scribble, I then tell my, my body to take all of that sludge and, and spots and start and see I'm right-handed. Okay and start to move it all, all to my right shoulder. Okay, bringing it from all parts of my body to my right shoulder. And then I'm gonna have it drain down my arm to my hand, to my fingers, and out my pen. So my okay. scribbles are all my gunk and mud and sludge. Okay? And so that's what I'm like doing as I'm, so you're giving your rule, your rules girl, some, 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 some parameters. Okay. We have, we have a purpose. We have you a purpose. Have, too. Yes. <laughs> you have a purpose. And so that's what, and you're just going to start scribbling. Okay. Okay. So some things to think about when you're doing this. Okay. Is that you don't have to focus the whole time with your eyes closed. I kind of like to do that because my mind just does what it does. But I also, I, I sometimes just turn on some, like, like I have this song that I'm going to put on for us. Um, that just is like five minutes. Cause they say this should take about five minutes. Okay. So you, you may, depending on what your subconscious thinks is enough, you may finish a little bit earlier, or you may have to take a little bit longer. And I'm going to tell you, I'm going to show you how, and you know how you are done. Okay. So some things to think about as you're doing that. Okay. And I mean, you can stare off into space if you need to. This is a mindless activity. So like if you're, like I told you, if you're in a meeting and you want to do this, you can just kind of stare off at the speaker and you're, you know, and you're, you know, everything. <laughs> but kind of be aware. You don't have to be focused on it, but kind of be aware about how you are scribbling. If it becomes really fast and agitated or if it becomes like, just kind of la, 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 you know, or if your pressure changes, just mm -hmm. let it flow. Okay. You just kind of, just kind of want to be aware, but you just want to let it flow. Now, some of us um, who have a little bit more of um, an internal, like we've done a lot of, of, of internal work and everything, you may have flashes of things that come at you and don't stop your scribbling and write about those. Just be like, oh, that's interesting. Just be aware. Oh, that's interesting. Oh, that's interesting. Okay. Because it is your subconscious saying, oh, well, these are possible events or possible things that are contributing or causing this. It's just information, just information, but just keep scribbling. 
So what's going to happen, you know, just let it flow. Just let it flow out. Let all that mud and sludge just come out. You don't want to stop that. that. What's going to happen, and I'm going to use a thicker pen to show you this so you can see it. What's going to happen is towards the end, and it could be towards the end of the five minutes, or it could be just towards the end of this. Oh, hold on. Towards the end of this section of what we're doing, mm -hmm. you're naturally, you're so you're naturally going to be moving into creating an oval. Your scribble will start to look like an oval that's open. Okay. If your oval is colored in, you're still not done. Keep working, keep working on it. But don't make it become this. Just continue to scribble. Okay. If your if your ovals are traveling, you're still not done. You want this. Okay. Open oval. And it will have a feel of completion to you. It's such a, a, an amazing thing as we start to do this. Okay. So you ready? I'm excited. <laughs> okay. <laughs> your hand will just naturally do that oval. Okay. So get your paper out. Are we going to do the close your eyes and drain mm -hmm. it all? In the okay. Yeah. Okay, cool. yeah. And I'm not going to lead you through that because I mean, mine looks like mud and sludge. Yours may be different, but it's not going to, well, I can't say it's not going to, but, but from what my experience is, it's not a little happy, bright color because you're moving out imbalances and negativity and things. So it's going to have either a dark spot or whatever look to it. Okay. So whatever comes to you, as you start, you just close your eyes, kind of scan. Okay. Where is this sludge or where is this mud or my dark spots or however you want to say it. And then ask your subconscious, your body, to start moving all of that towards, now if you're right-handed, like I said, to your right shoulder, if you're left-handed, to your left shoulder, and then have it start draining it down your arm, into your elbow, into your fingers, and then have it start draining into your pen, and then just let your pen start draining it out. And just start doodling on your on your paper. So, like I said, I'm gonna let's see how this song picks up into my computer, but just to give us something that's kind of mindless to, to think about. And it has about five minutes, right? So here we go. Thank you. 
That was actually five minutes and 23 seconds. How are you guys doing? Do you need to continue? I'm good. You good? I'm good. I'm good. So what are some of your thoughts with this? What came up? A lot of blank, black ink on my knuckles. <laughs> <laughs> It was interesting for me. Um, my issue was the circulation in my feet. Uh, I have kind of, it's like kind of markings and bruising and some swelling. That's a lot of where my Hashimoto's kind of inflammation goes. And it bothers me because it's unattractive and it's uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. um, and I like, I'm on my feet all day. I like to be on my feet. I like to work and stuff all the time so it's like it's kind of an issue and there's not really anything they can do about it i found that when i started it was a lot of little tight doodling a lot of really small and then about three quarters through i found my it just opening up into bigger and thoughts came to me about just the ability to move forward the freedom to step and go where mm. I want to go do what I want to do and create and my life and then it started it started to be circular it started in the music just kind of I felt in sync with the music and it became circular counterclockwise and I'm like oh I wonder why I'm going counterclockwise I wonder what it feels Me like too. to go the other way. and I went 
the other direction and it didn't feel good. I couldn't go clockwise. And then I, then I started into an infinity and that was where it ended. It was just, and it still looks like, like when I look at the picture, it's very oval and open, but it was more of a infinity. integrated thing. So that was my experience. That's cool. And That's so, really cool. that is really cool. And so I would, I would suggest that you probably did this, right? Cause it's a big issue. And so I would just every day address that and see what more comes and what's more released, you know, what more is released. And I know that you do other types of emotional work and emotional releasing. So this will just help with all that. But it's interesting how you did say you picked a small part too. You picked your, you picked your, your feet. That's part of even a bigger issue, Hashimoto's. So I'm wondering if just, I don't know, this is just a suggestion that once you do the, your feet, and you get all of these little bits done, if then you can move to be part of Hashimoto's and see what other things can be done. Mm -hmm. That would just be interesting to me to see if that is the way you want to do it. But the key to this is every day. Or even mm -hmm. if you feel like later on in the day, can my body do more? Can my body release more and do it again? Because the more that we are releasing from our body. It's a skill. Our body becomes more, becomes used to it. And so that we can do more releasing and more releasing. So, you know, in, I would say if this is new for somebody, they've never done any type of like energetic, emotional release, only do it every day, once every day. But for those of us who've done more of this type of thing, I would say, I'm going to actually see what can I do in the evening. You know, because my body can handle it. I know that because my body has done this, you know, before. But um, sorry, and go ahead. This kind of be, it seems like for me, who I'm not great at meditation necessarily sometimes, it seems like this could almost be an assist to meditation because it felt mm -hmm. like meditative type thing, but it mm -hmm. allowed me to, my brain did better doing this mm -hmm. than doing. Yeah. And even though less, less, less fighting with yourself. Mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> right. Well, and with yeah. the music, it actually felt like you were dancing. Mm -hmm. yeah. Anybody else have anything else that was interesting to them? Here I show you. Mine looks a lot like yours. I don't know. I don't know how well it'll show up. Let's just see. Well, uh, there, it was there. good. Yeah. 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 Okay. It looks a lot like Jen's. But um, it started out with everything swiped to the right. Oh, interesting. Pick up the pencil, get up, push it out of the way. Push it out of the way. <laughs> the way. Swipe and swipe and swipe. And then it was like these little ladder pieces, swipe, like windshield wipers, almost mm -hmm. back and forth. And then squiggles. And then it wanted to dance with the music. Oh, wonderful. And so just allowing that until eventually... I, I ran out of pencil, but I was doing these old, and I had the same question as cricket. I'm like, are these counterclockwise clockwise? And I just tell myself, okay, stop, let's come back. We're just going to do, we're going to just flow with this What's happening. But it was, it was ovals all around the page. A couple times, like a loop, like an onk symbol, symbol kind of thing. And then back to the ovals. And it was just done. It was very, very unique experience. I've not experienced anything like that before. That's cool. I like how you said it was just done. So you, did you always feel it? Like it was just done. It was just, you yeah. feel it was done. Yeah. You're just done. Like the yeah. end of the dance is done. And I'm like, I wonder how much longer the music goes because I'm going to be done here in just a second, you know? <laughs> And some of you might like be, be done before because remember, we, we gave our subconscious the parameters, five minutes of working on this. Well, maybe it didn't need five minutes. Because maybe it's like, okay, we, this is the section we're doing and it's only going to be three, but then tomorrow we'll do five or whatever. Um, I, I personally don't like to give myself a time frame. I just want to sit down and do it until it's done. Um, I haven't gone over like seven minutes. It's just, it's just, you know, it's just, a, it's just, it's not a large amount of time. So um, I just wanted to give you though, the, see how you can give it a parameter. Um, and that you want to give your your subconscious information that we just want to take a bite. What does that look like to you? Well, five minutes could be a bite. So I now do it. I just write down, you know, 
a bite or a small bit or a chunk of this. And then I just mm-hmm. sit and do it until it's done. Um, mine- Jen, I had an experience, like I had an experience with mine that I don't know at what point, but it was like, oh yeah, I'm done. I'm done. And then I had the thought, is there more? And so I asked myself, is there more? And my body was like, yep, <laughs> we got some more. Let's uh, let's dig in a little bit deeper into that right shoulder and like just push some things out. So yeah, that was yeah. really interesting. And, and, mm-hmm. it, and what I loved, because that was your, your subconscious saying, you know, are you like, is there more? Because you mm-hmm. were open and it was, there was, you could do more. And so you were saying, yeah, is there more? Yes. And so let's work on some more, you know, and so, you know, just trust mm-hmm. the things that come up and just go with it. Just go with the flow. So I love that you did that. Question, the oval. What's the significance of the oval? Was it because we introduced it to our subconscious mind that when we were doing ovals, we were done? Mm. Or was there significance with the shape and the meaning of the shape? I think it's, I think it's more of just like the shape and the meaning. A circle is, is a complete and so like when we, when, when we are complete, like when we have completed the exercise, our subconscious will let us know, but it's also, it's also uh, besides the um, infinity signal s- symbol, a circle is eternal. It's like, it's constant. It's, mm. you know, and so I, there's a lot of symbolism behind circles. I love circles. I don't know if you noticed they're all around me. Um, they're also mm. very peaceful. You know, they're continuing. Well, why a circle then? Why an oval? I don't know. They just said it's an oval. Yeah. yeah. I don't know. It just, it just happens. Research it and see what the meaning is. Yeah. yeah. I, for yeah. me, when I've done this and I saw a lot of it on mine, I get a lot of really like intense, almost angry lines mm-hmm. that go up and down, you know, mm-hmm. and everything. And it has a different energy than, than the circle energy, than the oval mm-hmm. energy. And, and yeah. even I can tell I'm shifting out of something because I'll start to kind of loop around my paper and then all of a mm-hmm. sudden something will come up and I'll start to go back to this, you know, and then mm-hmm. I'll feel kind of release and I'll start to loop around my paper or loop again. And there was even one point that I was sitting there going like this on my paper. I'm like, ah, you know, just like, but it was interesting mm-hmm. because even though I gave the parameter of my lower back pain, um, and I've had my lower back pain for a long time, like for years and years. But what my subconscious pinpointed on was just this past month and my experiences out in Utah and the lower back pain that was happening there. Mm-hmm. And so it took it took it took me to the most recent experience. So I thought it was interesting because I just said lower back pain. And I was just like, I was just waiting for the sludge to move out, but it took me. And so there were times when I was like, oh my gosh, this is sleeping on the couch, you know, or whatever, you know, that type of thing. So it was really interesting what, what mm-hmm. it was. Had to be able to see it. Yeah. Yeah. And so that was, that was kind of interesting for me. Um, but I know that man, this right here was probably even smaller than was my issue. So, I mean, I just have got a lot to work on, but which is cool because I'm, moving things out that I didn't know. And the things are brought to my mind, like how Cricket was saying how, you know, she got the information of like moving forward and things like that. So it's like more communication came to me about like what this was all about too. So it was just, it's, it's such a fascinating discovery, releasing um, t- um, technique experience. Mm-hmm. I noticed when we began, just when you were, when I closed my eyes, my first uh, inclination was to check in with my creator and just to start too. With, mm-hmm. and in gratitude and to ask for that guidance. And mm-hmm. I noticed with that grounding, it felt like, you know, you guided us to put things into this. He was helping mm-hmm. and everything just kind of shifted and was, because when I was listening, to be honest, I'm thinking, okay. I'm not thinking my dark spots are going to go into my shoulder and out my hand. Just not seeing it. Just not seeing it. And you're the but one when, that has such great imagery. So come on. Yes. Yeah, sorry. But <laughs> when I sat down, I checked in with him first, you know, as you were beginning to guide us, it's like things just opened up and it was opening the gate to be able to do the work. And that was really special too. And then your music was beautiful. Oh, thanks. That's just something I got off of YouTube. It's called adult lullaby. Actually. I really like <laughs> it. Yeah. I'll share it with you guys if you want it. 
So yeah, you put yeah. it out there that we could do it for practice if we wanted to. Because it's about five and a half minutes. So it's perfect. Love that. Well, and I like the feeling of knowing that I have an ending point. Yeah. Something when I start something like that. How about you, Nancy? You want to share anything about your experience? Okay, so I don't know why, but I didn't hear the music. So it was just complete quiet over here. And um, mine was just a reminder to have an earlier bedtime, you know, just to Mm. wrap things up earlier. So I didn't have problems with the black leaving it really encompassed all of my body except for my head because that's what's active at night. And um, although sometimes I, I know I should be in bed because my eyes are droopy. So there was like a black mass there and then the rest of the body, which was is tired. Mm -hmm. And, but it poured out like sand. It came out Mm -hmm. super easy. It didn't, it wasn't Mm -hmm. hard just mm. it just flowed out and so my first thought was to um doodle a heart which i did mm. and it wasn't connected um all the way but it was pretty much like a heart and i thought i was using the whole page i was using me too <laughs> a little tiny bit oh, I of love the page. It. <laughs> <laughs> telling. I like that. <laughs> so, mm-hmm. you know, but um, what came to me was that um, the heart, I show love to my body when I take care of it, basically. And so that came. And I never could get to a place where I did the oval. However, if you look at the first heart which is right here it looks more like a heart the last heart is not quite a heart anymore it's but it's not a noble and but it's more uh, closer to one yeah you uh, know, so I, I, anyways that that's what happened for me cool cool I kind of wonder I mean like you know I wonder if um, some of these things like your heart or what, what are in the like crickets, um, infinity, cause I do a little bit of infinity too, but I'm wondering if maybe these symbols are more of your closure symbol. I don't know. Um, I would just like maybe explore that and even like ask, you know, do I need to do an oval to, to have the closure or is my heart, you know, the closure. I don't know. Just, just explore it with yourself. This is just questions. I'm getting curious, you know, cricket did the, did the um, infinity symbols feel just very much like a closure symbol? Is she with us still? I, I don't know. She's yeah. Muted. There yeah. she is. Okay. Yeah. So, I mean, like yeah, it felt, it just felt like flowy and the dance it just that it just yeah. felt like hey, it's done. This is it. This is the end. I'm I'm wondering if some of these symbols that have like the more of that fluid feeling, the heart or the oval or the infinity, if that isn't more of like that. Because I know I know my my up and downs are not going to be closure. These are not going to be closure. These are actually just like you know aggression or intensity coming out. So this is just something I as we explore this, I would really like to know if that's how you feel you know, that these things are your closure symbol. Well, for me, I felt like there isn't closure yet. Okay. And so I couldn't do a full oval at this point. Okay. So maybe there's more work for you. Like, yes, that's how I felt. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Interesting. You want to share anything more, JC? Mine was, it's, it's crazy. Like as I sit here, just expanding, um, where I started, where you said we're scribbling, um, you know, was this very closed space. And then just like, yeah, just like with Beth and going to my creator and asking just permission to just, just be fully engaged. um, What, what came to my mind is that, um, 
he's given us so many tools to be able to release all of these emotions and yucky things that don't belong to us and they're not part of us. And um, that, that closeness that I had, that's not part of him. And that's not part of who I really am. And so just being able to expand and feel and open, it was like, this is your creator. This is who you are. And you're in partnership with me right now. And don't worry. It can be, look, it, I, I'm looking at it and I'm like, it's not a mess. It's not a mess. There was purpose in all of this. And there's beauty in some of the spirals and there's beauty here and there's beauty there. And there's some parts that are, that are heavy, but then it turns into beauty. And it was just like, for me, just this, it's continuing to be more expansive in my mind to see it because I started up so closed and so fearful. And so I can't do this. And this is, oh, no, who does this? <laughs> right. <laughs> so um, I don't know. Thank you. Thank you for this opportunity. In fact, I, I, I wrote down some names of, of people that I, I'd like to reach out and just practice this with, because I think it would be like super cathartic, right. Yeah. And healing. Yeah. yeah. And, and so we, we did this sitting here in a group and we did it with music. You can do it just by like sitting, looking out your window. I can't wait to when we have good weather to sit outside and do it while I'm looking at the trees. I mean, like things that speak to you. So it's like, you know, just putting yourself in other environments to do this. Like, and I don't know if, if you, I mean, cause I think a lot of you had your eyes closed, but at one point I just started staring up at the ceiling. I mean, like, it, this is something you, you don't really have to like focus on that sludge. I mean, in the beginning, yes. I think it's very important to focus on where it's moving from getting it moving. And, you know, I love how everybody like involved the state, the, the creator with it, you know, say your prayer. You know, because for some of us that have the resistance to do this, or you may be on board willing to get into that. And then all of a sudden you feel the resistance because there's a part of you that is like, I can't let this go. Or this is scary. Involving that, that, you know, that prayer helps things just to move smoother and to unfold for you. So that's, I think, an well, important because you feel safe. Yeah, I know for me, when I'm in with my creator, I feel safe and uh, protected mm -hmm. as I'm going through whatever is scary or yeah. uncomfortable. Or new, even sometimes new. Mm, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. 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 I just, for some reason, I just started thinking about how God has given us so many tools for our healing. And I think that our lifestyle makes it really hard for us to have these moments of, I'm just imagining like needing bread or working mm -hmm. in more simple slower paced, repetitive type things that through most of time people did as more part of their day. Mm -hmm. And our lives have become so much multitasking, going from one thing to the next and rush and hurry. But like, we don't ever have time for just this flow. Mm -hmm. of, mm -hmm. It becomes ruminating flow. It becomes kind of anxious or obsessive kind of quiet time and rather than having um we we hire out or we have our farmers or whatever like a lot of those things we now just buy and we spend our time yeah. being more yeah. efficient working faster and getting more done because those things take too much time so why do those it's a waste of your time but those are the things i think mm -hmm. that really <laughs> so critical for our emotional well-being yeah well, and you brought up such, a, such an important point with um kneading bread and doing the long repetitive things in flow if we don't have a place to be in flow i'll bet you that's a lot of the reason we get so plugged up with and we become anxious because mm -hmm. we don't have a flow release like you're talking about cricket that's so insightful yeah, yeah. i think also when we have those moments where we have that downtime, 
we are then put into like our distraction um, activities. Like we'll pick up our phone and we'll do a game or we'll do Facebook or we'll do something, you know, YouTube right. or Instagram, things that, that, that are just, we, we can be uplifting, but are more of a distraction. We're like, if we can carve out those moments, carve out the five minutes or 10 minutes to do this release. I mean, like how many of you feel, mm. so, I mean, I'm, I'm sitting here just going, man, I feel Zen. This is going to be a good day. Let's go do, you know, because I got rid of stuff, you know, that it was- actually feels, it feels like I feel after an hour of yoga or something. Uh huh. Same well, Zen feel. Like it's the same kind of feeling without <laughs> The time commitment, walking for an hour, you know, I know I didn't get the physical out of this, but I do still have a little, a little bit of a buzz. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's so cool. It's, it's funny, Jen, when you were first talking about, you know, we're moving our bodies and in or- we've got to release in order to move our bodies. And I grew up with five brothers. <laughs> and so, um, that was my life. And we moved so often. I really didn't have girlfriends or stayed in a neighborhood long enough, or we were on a farm or wherever we were, but, um, like with my brothers and then having my two boys right off the bat, so close to each other as children, they're wrestling all the time. Right. Or there's a conflict and unfortunately we duped it out at our house. I mean, we're, <laughs> <laughs> but, Brothers, but it didn't yes. last it didn't last long it was like five minutes maybe right mm-hmm. but it was over and then we were all pals again and so I grew up like this and then I got into um, a school where there were three girls that they had lived together and I mean th- they grew up together and got into this mean girl situation right that I had never experienced before And just having that mental stuff, because there was no duking it out. There was no, it was, it was really hard for me to learn to with women, because I think women internalize stuff. Whereas I grew up with all these boys and I was like, can we just like fight and just like get this over with? I don't. Yeah, 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 there was no resolution. And so it that's bit that these techniques I think are super, super important for I'm gonna teach my granddaughters, mm-hmm. you know? Like let's just because they're not the physical wrestle and mm-hmm. that kind of stuff, you know. But it's still so, resolves, anyway, it just some thoughts. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I think like my husband, he's not duking things out anymore, but his release is look, I'm gonna go move that hay pile from there to there, or I'm gonna go dig a hole. Really it works fine. for them. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> right. It works for them. So yeah. just something like in the beginning, while you're doing this, do it how we did it. Okay. Like in the in, you know, in a sense. But I know because I'm thinking of Beth about this one. I don't know about anybody else here that loves okay. their colored pens and everything their markers but if you want to as you start to get more familiar with this keep a few colors by the side of your paper and don't think about it but just when when you feel like it change your pen change your pen and see how the colors come out if you just want to mess around with the color a little bit that just might add a little bit very cool I knew she would I know. I love it. You guys, seriously, these markers, I know I can't stop, but Troy got them for me for Christmas and they have a little roller at the end. This one, when you roll it across your paper, I'll oh, see, I don't think I can show it to you, but this one actually rolls a pattern of hearts and dots across uh-huh. your paper. Uh-huh. And then the other end is a regular marker, mm-hmm. just regular fine tip. Yeah. They're the coolest thing ever. Fun. Fun. Yeah. Any questions, anything else you want to share before we wrap it up? This one was kind of a short one because it was just one technique and I kind of wanted to just keep it to this one technique because it's just so impactful. And I, love, I just love color. Yeah. I wonder like with bees, when we've got this whole great big sheet, come on, show up. There it is. There got it is. this whole great big sheet. Um, how fun it would be to go back and color in those, some of those big spaces. <laughs> okay, so, <laughs> 
I mean, especially with your hearts and dots. Yeah. Yeah. yeah with my heart that around the whole act outside. But I don't know if y'all can see the progression of the clearing on this, but there's something here that looks like a rocket ship. Can you yeah. see? Oh yeah. Now, yeah. I totally see yeah, that. I did. Um, I did all of those. I told you all of those swipes, but then when it was the crisscross ladder swipes, that's what this made was this almost blast off kind of point. And that's when it started to go into the curves. Yeah. That's cool. If, if you color that in Beth, you could start um, dark where you began and then uh -huh. transition to light, you know, that would be colors. Really It'd be kind of fun. Yeah. That would I, be really I, neat. I am going to caution on the coloring it in because, okay. Because I wanted that too. I'm glad you're saying this. Okay, Go I need caution on that because this is the negativity we got out. Yeah, this is just pushing it all out, getting it out of our body, out of our consciousness, out of our just our existence, and we're told to get rid of it. Right. Okay. So right. what if we got rid of it and started fresh with a new one to see what came? Yeah. So it's like we're not supposed to hold on to it. We're not no. supposed to go back and revisit it. It's over, it's done, it's out. So a, a caution on going back and coloring it. So yeah. No coloring. I won't. I don't want that anymore. I mean, I looked at it, I got what I needed out of it. I thought, oh, that was interesting that I was doing those peaks too and and having the intensity and but I'm done. Mm -hmm. Because okay. I, I just I just worked on that chunk. My issue is now a little bit smaller. I have more chunks to work on. So yeah. I love it. Well, I'm going to play with this one again. This has really been good, Jen. I just have a mm -hmm. comment to piggyback mm -hmm. on what Cricket said. Um, as she was talking, I was thinking of the beach and how you have the water coming in and out, in and yeah. out. And then I thought of our hearts, you know, contraction, expansion, contraction, expansion, mm. breathing in and out. And so I think um, the we live in a, a a perfect world that our heavenly Father created. Um, although it's not in it's not perfect as we live in it, but things are made to go in and out. And um, so if we take that time in our lives, I was also thinking how. You couldn't really do this exercise, but there are moments when we can quietly reflect. And that would be folding laundry mm -hmm. or doing dishes. You yeah. know, there there really are moments we can if take that time. Yeah, if we don't let distractions yeah. come. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. um, even though mm -hmm. we're not doing perhaps what um, people did a hundred years ago, there are still moments for us. We're driving somewhere, you know, you, um, mm -hmm. you, you can take those quiet moments and uh, have, have that time. So anyways, those are my thoughts. Those are great thoughts, Nancy. Thank you, I Nancy. I want to just kind of like piggyback a little bit off of one of yours because you talked about those ins and outs that are found in nature and I call the rhythms. We can see rhythms in nature and these rhythms, like even within our body, everything, these rhythms, when you kind of connect into them, they have like a soothing beat to them. Like yeah. when you talk about the ocean, the ins and outs of the waves, have you ever just stood there and kind of just synced yourself with that? Mm -hmm. It has like this calming <laughs> and this like, and so find these rhythms in nature, find these rhythms. And I think that's why breath work is so cool. It's like when you get that rhythm going, you start to have that calm and that. So yeah, these rhythms in nature and these rhythms in our lives, we should really be looking for them and engaging in them. So thank you, Nancy, for bringing that up. Okay, so after we finish recording, I have a question for JC. <laughs> When, when you push it off, so don't <laughs> don't, don't take us off. Just leave us. On I the will stop recording as soon as we're done. Yeah, and then I'll and then yeah. we can stop off privately. Yeah. Is there anything more you want to talk about, Jen? This is all I have for this. 
This was beautiful. It was fantastic. Okay, let's just do a quick visit of the calendar of what's coming up this week, you guys. We've got um, Jumpstart was today. Monday night, Mm -hmm. we have Mastermind again. Mm -hmm. Everybody check in with your Mm -hmm. accountability partner. Bring your partner to Mastermind. Tuesday, we have Coaching Clear. 1.30 Central. Our Coaching Clear sessions just keep getting better and better and better. It is so neat. I wish I could do them. So yeah. neat. I know we need to find another time to do coach and clear that might work for, you know, for people who would work during the day. Um, Wednesday, we have book club and I got to tell you, I was listening to it again last night. I set my iPad up. So it reads to me now. It just reads <laughs> anything I want to read with the accessibility That's feature. Awesome. And it was just, it's so enlightening. You're right, Jen. Every time I listen, I'm like, oh, I want to write that down in my coaching notebook. Mm-hmm. Just yep. the idea. Yeah. Of all of those. Um, oh gosh, I'm brain frying. What's the word that she uses? She uses self-sabotage a lot. But that's self, right. Yeah. All, the words yeah. She, all of the times that she points out self-sabotage for me, um, looking at those as protection mechanisms, you know, that self-sabotage is a protective protection. Yeah. It's so fascinating because I guess maybe I'm just in that phase, but I can just see them looking off in my life. And go, oh yeah. That's a protection. That's a protection. So I want to deepen my faith and I want to deepen my trust in what's happening so that those protections aren't, I don't feel like they're needed anymore. Mm -hmm. So that's Wednesday book club. And how far are you guys reading this week for the discussion? We're just going through chapter three or four. Yeah. Three, three. Yeah. Because three is a really long one. To the end of chapter three. Yeah. The end of chapter three. Okay. And Mm -hmm. then that's 130 central as well. And it's on Jacine's Zoom link. It's not the regular Zoom link, but it's there on the 50, 50 girl page. And then I'm not aware of anything else after Wednesday next week. Anybody? Mm-mm. No, because we don't have any no. more creation meetings. We don't have any more jump starts until the beginning of, well, third, the third Thursday will be our regular creation meeting for a creator-based year. And then we'll have jump start again next, the first weekend in March. And, and do, do we, we have, that is, that's what I'm asking you. Do we know what that one is? I forgot to look. Of course, I forgot the whole meeting was today. So oh, there no. you go. Just tell us what it was. Um, do we have though on Monday, the podcast? Mm-mm. We forgot every yes. Monday. Though. Yeah. yeah. Every, and what's cool is every Monday we're doing the live on the 50, 50 page and every Saturday at seven 30 in the morning, a new podcast is released on iTunes and Spotify. So mm-hmm. if you're not a 50 50 girl, you can still um, listen to the podcast. They just come out with about a two or three week delay on the podcast. Mm-hmm. And yeah. the name of the podcast, Beth? A creator based life. And if it's if you do the search for creator based with a hyphen, you will find it very quickly. A creator hyphen based life. Yeah. And it's awesome. We're on our second season. I think we're about five, five uh, podcasts into the second season. So we're making, yep. got a lot of good out there. A lot of good out there. That's very fun. Very fun. And subscribe yep. and share. Share it with your people. Please. People who you know will benefit it. Yeah. From it. So as always, Jen, you are the master. Well, thank you so much. I just pass on information. I can just so, pass on so good. That's all. So good. Yeah. And we'll yeah. see everybody Monday for the Facebook Live, Tuesday for yep. Coaching Clear, Wednesday for Book Club, and Saturday a podcast release. All right. Take care, y'all. Bye. Bye, guys. Take me with you. I'm ready to go. Let the winds of change shape and grow. Now I am willing to make a choice. Hey, thanks for joining us today in A Creator-Based Life. I hope you felt that compassion, mindfulness, and hope you came seeking today. You can find more of it at cmhcoaching.com or on Linktree slash cmhcoaching. Of course, any social media outlet, we're there too. Because you felt the benefit and light in this message, please invite those you care deeply about to join us. 
Help us to create a ripple effect across the globe of compassion, mindfulness, and hope. Then we can create a creator-based life together. Have a great week, y'all. We'll talk to you soon. I am willing to let go. I surrender. surrender and I know I surrender and I know